Good morning folks, we're in the unit on a Tuesday morning after uh, a surprise weekend away. We took uh, Gem and the kids to the coast for the birthdays. Spent the weekend in Bridlington and Scarborough. Got sunburn on my nose, look at that. So I've come in this morning to find this on the floor. Lovely green and red shive. And we've got a cask of Tiny Rebel. So this bad boy seems to have blown its shive. Unlucky me ducky, it's not very good is it? So that's obviously the heat causing this to explode. So there's 300 quid down the drain. So not only do I have the weekend to catch up on, I also have a clean up operation on my hands. Something I could have done without. We've also got to get the AC unit installed in the brew shed because everyone's dying of uh, heat exhaustion. Exhaustion? Is that even a word? And uh, yeah, well, there's, there's so much to do today. I feel somewhat overwhelmed by it all, but I'm just going to segment the tasks into different, you know, task one, task two, task three, and we're going to knock them on the head as and when we can. That's the plan. Wish me luck because we're going to start. Well, in order to clean up all the mess that we've got over there, uh, I need to obviously run the hose pipe up to the top of the unit and spray all of that beer down to the bottom. This hose isn't long enough, uh, so what we're going to do is change it out for this high-vis hose, which I got from Canthorpe Industrial. I think it worked out at something like three or four pound a meter. It's got a burst pressure of 20 bar which is a heck of a lot more than this than this old style of hose part, garden hose essentially. So we're going to transfer this. We've got meters and meters of that. We can run it right up to the top of the unit and spray everything down with it. come up to the uh, pub what I had to do was take this back window panel out I couldn't find my glass cutter to cut into it and it was rotten anyway the whole window needs changing out so I thought well screw it I'll just uh, put a piece of plywood in and cut a hole for the for the blower so now the pub has freaking air conditioning just what the doctor ordered. So what I have to do now is uh, get my big brew fan and take this bad boy back down to the unit and that will keep me cool all day tomorrow while I'm brewing. Well, I say keep me cool, probably won't. One thing I do wanna do though, folks, while I'm up here, I'm going to actually have a quick nip of the old uh, coconut, is it that one? Coconut shy on keg while I'm here, may as well. Quick nip of the coconut on keg. Let's see how this is pouring. So, got a Heineken glass here, 
Oh yeah, baby. Right then, coconut shy PA. Look at that. It's dropped pretty clear, hasn't it, folks? Oh, that is superb. Mmm. Cold, refreshing, creamy, yet carbonated. Tropical, coconut, beery, you know. It's got a good beery taste to it as well. This is an exquisite ale. Wowzers. Right, anyway, talking of the coconut, I've just spent about two and a half hours emptying the coconut out of that tank. So yeah, without a doubt, we are gonna have to have uh, a big nylon bag or something to put the coconut in. I'm gonna use it for the boil as well, I think, because it was exactly the same you saw on the video when Tom and Froggy came over. It was exactly the same, trying to get all the coconut out of the fermenter as it was getting it out of the boil kettle. So, big bag is uh, what we need. Don't mind if I have to stitch one and make it myself, just as long as we can put it in. And it's massive, like, to disperse five kilograms of coconut and then just like, hang it on the side when we're casking. Shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but yeah, having spent all of that time this morning cleaning that coconut up, and there's still bits of coconut under the decking and everything that I can't get to, I now have to go in there and start to pull out all of the ingredients for tomorrow's brew day and the day after and the day after. So we've got three back-to-back -back brew days provided I've got all the ingredients in. Let's go and do that. Woohoo! Lovely. tanks cleaned out and I've also started working on this cask washer stroke keg washer modification. There's a problem, I need to introduce a gas line to obviously flush the kegs. Um, I'm not sure whether this uh, setup is perfect for it. I've had it on, I've had it running, but yeah, I mean if you look at that, it seems to work fine, just having the taps there and what have you, but if I'm going to introduce gas to the system, I'd like to have some type of fail safe. Obviously it's going to be regulated, so there's no way I can introduce more than, let's say, 20 PSI into the system. Uh, and we know that these kegs can take up to 60, 70. So that should be fine, but that's a job for another day. Let's concentrate on getting some beer back in these tanks. Therefore, I am at the moment weighing out the grains for two batches of the Vacant Gesture and one batch of the Harrison's Best Bitter. So let's get that done. There wasn't much video captured for the weighing out of the grains there, guys. I started doing it. Um, Got a few shots, noticed I'd not turned the camera on. Ha! That old trick. And then I thought I'll just get the water set up with a timer for tomorrow. And you'll notice that there's something missing off the control panel. Yep, that's right. So the timer on the control panel seems to have shit the bed. No idea why. I mean, it's not anything special. It's just basically a cheap generic timer that we got from City Electrical Factors. So remind me never to buy one of those again. You got it in there, Jim? Can you bring it out? So what I've done is just bypass the wires. Basically, the timer now doesn't exist. 
in there. This is it. And uh, yeah, we're just running a hard line. We've got the on and off switch with the key. That's fine. But I can't set it to come on at six in the morning. So uh, Jem's just looking for a external timer, which we've got somewhere. You know, one that you plug in for your washing machine. We'll just plug the control panel in with one of those. That'll be good enough. But yeah, if you look on the front of this, if this will uh, actually, there we go. So you press this little button, it goes from off to auto to on. When it goes to on, red light should come on and you should hear the little relay click. Well, relay no click all. So that's proper hitting the pad. So yeah, we've got one of these instead. 24 hour time switch. That is good enough for me. It's not carrying any load. It's not even switching more than half an amp really for the whole unit. We've tested this before. So I'll just whack that in there, set it for today's time and set this to come on at about three o'clock in the morning when we come in. We should have hot water for our brew day. So I need to weigh out the water treatment and the hops. I'll do the hops tomorrow. I need to weigh out the water treatment. And then we're ready to go and pick the kids up. My mum's had them since one o'clock, I think. Stuart took them round and left me here doing all this. So we've got grain in the mash tun, as you can see there. We've got plenty of grain in the mash tun. I've had a play with the sparge arm. Basically, I've just put some silicon grease on there, some silicon lubricant spray, food lube. See if it rotates a little bit better like that. And I've drilled new holes in it. Put the spacings of the holes a bit closer together. Anyway, you'll see all this tomorrow because that's when we're gonna be brewing. There's not much else for me to do but set the timer. So we'll see you in the morning. Ciao.